Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that it stopped working. Changes. Yeah, so get rid of that. <laughs> Mark, you got a seat right here. Okay. Okay. Right, Fred? Sure. Fred's good. All right. But good. So now the issue. <laughs> Can you see the chart? Not yet. Changes. I think we're finally ready. Can I just do a sound check? Can those people who are on uh, calling in, can they hear us okay? Oops. Well, I'm very thank you for coming out tonight, especially because of the like, It's very much appreciated. Uh, so, my name is Joe Zalek. I've got the honor to be representing people who are sitting around the state and have done a significant amount of work over the last eight months to deliver today to you our preliminary findings and recommendations on the website. <laughs> Uh, because we're still gathering input, we'll still listen back to uh, uh, speaking uh, more than enough for me, for the comments from the community, and we still have some more work to do before our initial phase and our initial report is not a part of the report to the end of next month. So let me spend one minute before we get into the presentation about two of the people that are behind me. Uh, they represent Cross section of celebration. Over 80 years of living here in town, representing every village except the North Village. You know, as you can see, uh, some of us have gray hair, and some of us are much younger, some are married, uh, kids. And so it really is a good cross representation of, of, of celebration. Uh, in addition to that, we've got subject matter experts, we've got people who are up here who are architects. Who are yeah, CFOs uh, and, and really operations people, uh, people who have built large buildings. Uh, we've got just about you know, a good cross section. Why that's important is if you can look back over the uh, last strategic plans that have been done in the past, for the most part, they've been done by some very talented outside people, outside firms, professional firms. And so this time we've got a different people around so we can show that. It's very talented. So with that, uh, we're going to go to our first chart. So again, today, looking just quickly, we'll talk about what the objectives are of the group, uh, considerations, survey results, very important. We'll talk about that with recommendations, and then spend the majority of the meeting. The objective is uh, for me, representing this team of people behind us, speak for maybe an hour and now 15 minutes, and then turn it over to all of you. Um, we will spend a fair amount of the meeting though talking about project summaries. This is the vision for the next five to 10 years of what's possible here in celebration. So not saying yes, we need to do every project, but this is what's possible given the space, given the financials, et cetera. And then we'll talk very importantly about our recommendations slash next steps. 
put that next page. So um, what are our objectives? This is consistent with what we've shown you back in February. It, it's, it's, looking, it's developing a strategic plan, number one. Number two, it's giving our expertise, especially we have some talented people, lots of talented people, art who's an architect, talented and others, trying to lay out at least a vision, a high level plan for the time frame and what needs to be done to alleviate that. Uh, next, what is in the past, the one was critical, but the past and time studies were done, and then, you know, something to do better is implement it. So, we want to talk a little bit about what do we do after our report is done to help, help the, the, the pro uh, uh, board and the community to get them executed. And then, lastly, our objective is to work with the partners, uh, also, with the schools working with just a bunch of uh, different organizations because when we're said and done, the residents are you know, our, our ultimate customer. But whichever organization you're representing, most people I know I know this and care about which organization you are. I just want to you know how you can help optimize my sale. Next. Um, So the you know, approach we took, and this is a very similar talk to what we showed you in February, is what are we going to show you over the next hour? It's not the opinions or the desires of the people behind me. It's not my desire, but I would like to see self creation because that's not what we were asked to do. It's not the desires of the co board. What it is is for the place of it's back database, database set up desires and wishes by the community. So our, our goal was to take all that data and translate it and put it in the report. That's otherwise, you know, we've got too many different groups and too many different things. So now let's look at the overall as best we can what the community wants and the community's asking for. So that starts with community meetings, the survey, which we're going to talk about in more detail, very important the survey that we did. There's, I'm going to take you through the list. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of pages of prior documents, studies that have been done. So it's important to look at that work. Um, we, we took a look at, you know, looking at other communities, what do they have, and what do we want to have here. Um, we did site assessments, but we literally went around. I forgot the number I had a crib just so uh, look. We have so many beautiful parks here. And so we have so many, there's a lot here. So we might spend a fair amount of time looking to see what's here. Uh, money, money, money. We all, <laughs> all nice, but we, we, we have to look within budgets with affordability. We also have to look, if there wasn't budgets of affordability, you know, what, what could be a vision? Um, and, and big concern is available space, because we just don't have a lot of available space, and we want to protect as much as the space as possible. We have to factor that in. And then, as I mentioned before, we're So, as I mentioned, raise. Oh, I hear something. Can you mute them? Do you know how to do? Can I ask everybody uh, who's on team? You muted them. Thank you very much. A uh, lot of documents uh, historically that have been done, as I said, literally hundreds and hundreds of them. What's really interesting, you can take them, keep them and line them up. That's kind of the same message. It's not, you know, it, it may be, you know, something that was ranked second is now ranked third, something was fourth, it's third, but it's basically the community has been saying the same thing uh, or looking at external. I don't want to take you through the data, but they're looking at, you know, compared to other communities. They're all kind of triangulate around five or six projects, or five or six needs that you need. Um, and so that's, uh, that's all the documents we looked at, and as I said, that's a good foundation uh, for what we want to do next. So this is just uh, you know, for two people at Starbucks. You know, what would they be saying to each other? They would be saying, you know, you know, the last 14 years there's been lots of master plans done, and a fair amount of money to start consultants. People here, for three months, and enjoyed it. 
Uh, there have been lots of projects, and each one of those sort of, uh, studies that have been done. Uh, major projects stay the same, but some projects are you know, pretty light, some attempts towards lots of sub projects underneath. Um, you know, many of the projects, for a variety of reasons, have not been implemented. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And, um, you know, but if you go back all the way back to 2014, it, it highlighted the need for, for, for some very similar things. And that's, you know, either a new or a mediated town hall. Uh, it's been talked about sports fields, I think is next. Community center, art center, some sort of performance center. Um, talked about having some pickleball slash multi purpose sports, basketball courts, et cetera. Um, and slash bags. Uh, so the, those are the kind of common themes that if you go back and look historically or look at the survey. Um, and if you look at the last strategic plan that was done, my opinion, our opinion is very good plan. Yeah, none of those recommendations you know, 2019 strategic plan have been funded or implemented in any, any action. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's kind of some overall observations. And two other things, and I was we were we were surprised, but not really got down some boulevard. But uh, we're going to get a higher village or other places. But our population has grown significantly since 2018. Uh, it's up over 40 percent. And the, the build out of island village will get close to 50 percent. So since 2018, the population has grown significantly. And, and as you're all probably aware, uh, you know, we've made since 2018 you know, limited. Investments, but well, not not in the 2019 so. And you know, they've been in each one of the communities, like Island uh, Village, they built down built facilities, but nothing that been centrally located for, for, for all to enjoy. So uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about the survey results. There's a lot of observations on here. Uh, again, we're going to have a report at the end of next month that will be published. Currently, you'll be doing some 75 to 100 pages. I'll have all this data in detail. I'm certain to be about 30 pages because we have a young lady. Where is she? She's in the corner right there. What did you do for her? She must do something with data. She, she took all this data and it's a beautiful job organizing. She looks at a snapshot here, but it, it's important to see because there's lots of Friends and lots of things that we know, so you can put them all up. Um, but most important is the top one. Twenty percent of the residents here at Celebra households in celebration participated. In the survey. that's the highest level in the P twenty compared to anything that was done at the Grand Manners or any other uh, surveys that have been done. Twenty percent is the highest. So what that told us is people want their voices to be heard, and there were over five hundred comments. There were 500 comments that we went through. So people, they wanted the voices to be heard. Um, kind of a surprise, but not a surprise for our population, whether or not it's the incentives uh, or the ACS system. Our population is aging here in celebration. Trying to buy a home on a wide basis. The younger people versus the home are saying expensive. Supposed to be a look in the demographics, population is getting older. Um, but there's a point I mentioned whether or not it's a community center, splash pads, pickleball, town hall, those consistent, especially this survey, is, is the top of the right needs. Community center is ranked number one in this survey, in survey. And as you can imagine, because many of us do enjoy. Uh, the, the boardwalks, fitness center, playgrounds, schools currently for the most enjoyed in each year in town. Uh, and uh, people would, would rather, if possible, rather than have centralized facilities, you like to have decentralized facilities. Um, not by a huge difference, but by a difference. And I'll probably relate to that. You'd rather drive one mile to go to one or five. 
So, uh, so that's where we are. Um, and the last bullet's important. Seventy percent of the people said, "Well, I'd be willing to pay not a lot, but a little bit extra. You could deliver some some of these items." So, yeah, it wasn't. But like the short, you know, was in favor of you know, poetry selling up. But they said, you know, if you could deliver this, we'll and we'll And we're going to show you how we think you can do that with a little bit extra. Um, the next chart depicts the, the top weighted needs as, as highlighted by the surface. And I'm just going to show you how, to, you how to read this. The first says, how many people liked that activity? So the community center, 83% of the people gave it a rank because you didn't have to rank every other. And if it went to skate park, only 63% of the people ranked that. And then depends where you want to go. If you want to go to the bottom line, what was the overall cumulative score, right? One being it's the most important thing to me. You can see 40% of the people said community center is number one, 68% were in the top three, and overall is 2.8. What was also somewhat interesting is pickleball, lawn sports, and splash pad were all fairly similar. Uh, it, not, not in terms of number one, pickleball was there, but pickleball sort of was more distributed, so the weighting was, was just slightly better than the other two. But what it basically said is if people were interested in all three of those, basketball and state park uh, trail. And I want to flip through these next two charts. What are the top used facilities? Uh, pools. Obviously, we have lots of pools. Open lawn, and that includes the events that uh, Carla has downtown. Uh, the hiking and boardwalk trails, fitness centers, which was a little bit surprising. At fitness centers and, and the play games. Um, if we go to least used facilities, again, yeah, some inconsistent. What you would probably think: boxing courts. Uh, the sand volleyball courts, basketball courts, barbecue grills, and the dog park. Now, you may be surprised by the two at the bottom. You know, basketball courts are least used because if you try to try out trying to use the basketball courts, you can't use them because there's people. But from the end, it's a, so of course it's least used because only 50 people can use it at a time. It's actually hundreds of people to use it. And the dog park is a very loyal group of people who use it, but just in terms of the percentage of uh, the overall, just think about the bottom five. Um, all right, so next we're going to talk about national standards. So this is looking with our friends at uh, a one thing. But uh, the consultant that CTBD uh, has used is using, you know, is able to get some data looking at national comparisons of towns and precipitation. And they identified probably 10 items when we were deficient. These are the top five, so this percentage, if you look at the numbers. Mark, we have been in the same point. Do you want us to hold the questions till the end? Yes. So again, we can hold the questions till the end, and there's actually going to be a comment here at the end where people can come up and speak to me, or depending on how many people want to speak. Time um, anyways, national standards would say we're missing the pickleball courts, we're missing the community center slash team slash senior center, basketball courts, the ratio of you know, one basketball court, 12,000 people, uh, baseball fields, and, and a community center with you know, zero versus one. Okay. Um, so as we look, as the team behind me looked and decided, okay, so now what do we do? We've got, we've got all this debt. And there's a couple of things we need to do. We need to look at now through the lens of our different customer groups. We're doing the constituents here in town. So as we look at this data, we make sure we address from our children, teens, all the way up to fellow senior citizens. And so we want to make sure that we, we look through the different lens. We may not necessarily do something for everybody in this group, but that we're well aware of, of, you know, of the needs of everyone. So that, that's one lens that we looked at. Keep going. 
Uh, the second lens that we looked at, so we've got all the data we looked at, we got the lens of our customer groups, and then we looked at the celebration points. So as we're making recommendations, how do those recommendations fit into the core values of celebration? So if you're doing something to promote health, is it doing something to promote technology? Is it doing something for the sense of community? Right? And, and so we, we looked at it through that lens. So all of a sudden, it gets, so it's not just, hey, the survey said, don't create a sound, it's going to be stuck. If you try to look at it different ways, different approaches with that same set of Okay, so now we're going to get into the project. And, and before we do that, you get to stop on the left side. So remember, what we did some site assessments, we looked at national standards, we looked at all those documents, hundreds of pages over the last 14 years, we community form and the survey. We said, okay, given that, given the lens of our constituents, given the lens of community standards, where does that come out? And, and, and then we said, okay, let's now take those projects and put them into three buckets. First bucket would be a civic bucket. Second would be social, and the third would be community, which would be the parts of sports. So again, if you did everything, it's so okay, we do all the projects and all sports. You're basically, right, so, so we looked at, and, and when we're done, the priority is obviously, um, you know, happens to be listed first on this page, not necessarily the top of the um, years, is, you know, town hall and mediation. Right, we're now sitting here today, July 23rd. 2024, we don't have a town hall. Most likely, we won't have one for a long period. So, we need to figure out how to put some kind of continued urgency into that. Uh, we know socially, uh, we need a community center. We've got a couple of different options that we looked at for the community center um, in terms of different locations. Um, and we'll take you through in detail uh, building a multi generational uh, center uh, in downtown. Lakeside Park, Community Center, um, the Civic Corridor, and an expansion of Heritage Hall. And then lastly, as it relates to arts, sports, community, uh, we've got everything from the multi-purpose courts, lawn sports, community center, uh, splash pads, and uh, the parks enhancements. You know, we love those parks. We all know those parks are great and some are not age as well as you might. Uh, we know that also for facilities. The one thing I should have pointed out in the very, very beginning, um, and this, this group of people, when we said at the beginning, we said, well, there's a lot of uh, maintenance issues, right? So we, we documented those and shared those uh, with co But our strategic plan is not to address current maintenance issues. It's something that we think is really, really important, but it's it was facile. And, and you can say, well, let's do that first. That, that, that's a different discussion. If you lay out a strategic plan, we wanted to ensure is that we notated that very important issue and then focus on, on, on a new thing. So that's that's kind of a blueprint. And so now spend the next 15 or 20 minutes going so through each one of those projects um, and, and talking in, in a similar format. You see a description. And you're going to see a site plan, an architectural. Okay, I guess you can't. I use the wrong words. You get yelled at. Is it? It's not a special site plan. It's a it's, it's a sketch. The sketch that looks really fashion. But <laughs> and the reason it's important. It's a, it's a sketch that looks not done well. And the reason it's important is because if you say, "Well, I want to put this here," or if it doesn't fit. Okay, and it doesn't fit, it's not for zoning, it's not it's got issues, parking. And you know, for the idea, but the fit or or what I, okay, well, what would it look like? Gee, you know, team that sounds like a great idea, but I don't know. So you're gonna see that. Um, and, and that's not to say that's nothing since the final plan. This is gonna say as the sufficient. Okay, and then the last thing we'll do is you know, we'll talk um, you know, money at the end. So multi-purpose courts, right? We obviously there's been lots of discussion about you know the need to enhance our um, ability for, for people of all ages 
uh, to have additional sporting facilities. So, so what this uh, outline says that we would build eight multi-purpose courts uh, that would be on lot B in the civic corridor. So the multi-purpose courts, we can see several things. What we recommend in the beginning for those pickle courts and for our flats. And what that means is at the end of the year, more people are playing basketball. It's fine. But the, the, the footprint said, more people playing pickleball, you could convert more to water. So they're flexible, but the plan would be to start with more for pickleball, one or two for basketball, and one or two flex. We have an expert in sports, Marco, over there, and, and he, he's listed all the different sports. So much he's heard of it, so I have to look at this. But, but you know, there could be a lot of different things there. Uh, and what it starts to do is it starts to build out that civic quarter. So that the, so that in addition to what's there, you know, we start to populate it more and make it more to, to go. So I'm not going to go through in the interest of time how each one of these projects fit in um, with, with each one of the cornerstones, but most fit into most of the cornerstones. Right? Some more than others, uh, but most do. Uh, and again, the design will allow flats. So, so they say, well, we need to have work to do. Why are not? It's flexible between now and when they're built. I'm sure there'll be a lot more opinion as to how we should flex. But right now, this is our initial uh, recommendation. Okay. So as as promised, the, uh, the next page is take that site plan. Not a plan. <laughs> That's a plan. So it's a sketch. Okay. So again, you can put pickleball, you can put basketball, you can put badminton. Volleyball, I think so. And uh, shaded spaces, uh, you could also put, you know, we have an issue on there. There could be fans, you know, you could put the community center next door. You could also put more hot shots, children's activities um, on one of those courts. Uh, just go back one second, Fred. Okay. So right now, and, and this is, you know, this shows eight courts. Okay, they look very much like a pickleball courts because this was taken from the work that was done. Uh, but what you can do, and that's big thread, is you know, they could be pickleball, paddle tennis, badminton, basketball, hockey, and, and we, we took these segments and we're able to show that different sports fit in there. Okay, thanks. Uh, splash pads. Now, splash pads have been very consistent when you know, Highlighted the need in the community. Um, we think you know it, it, it fits a lot of needs, wanted social, it's for families, uh, etc. So, so we you know we, we've got a splash pad. You see, it's in Lakeside, it's in the pool area where the current what would you call kitty pools? The current kitty pool is. So you would repurpose that um, and. and we think this is something that's exciting. It's, it's protected behind the, the, our gate, uh, so it'll be for residents only. It's a way to get cool, it's a way to socialize, it's a way to have fun, especially when the family may be already uh, downtown. So, splash pad, and we can now go look at a picture of it. Um, just as a uh, reminder for those who are familiar, Lakeside, and then um, Kurt Pool, and you can see the splash pad, which right now this says it could be up to, those of you who can't see it, which is only most of you. You know, this footprint here is roughly 60 feet by 80 feet. It's a wee round look. And the splash pads currently in Winter Garden. And don't tell me the other one, and Claremont. And Claremont. Whenever Claremont has municipal splash pads, we looked at those, we looked at others. So that, that's a nice size footprint. The plumbing is already there. Space is there. So we think that, that this could be a, a nice a nice idea. Um, okay, so parks enhancing. We, we took a look at all the different parks around town and we recommended enhancing almost all of them. That doesn't mean all of them need to be done today. We think they work, we would prefer to throw up or your college. We enlisted the whole list. We did the whole list. It's, it's, it's a million dollars for the whole list. 
And so you know, we would pick off the ones that were deemed most important. But starting at North Village, one of the things we noticed, and I'm sure you have too, many of our parks is not great shape. Um, it's not great ability to recharge phones or technology. Um, and we would want to do in North Village uh, a refurbishment meeting room, very small meeting room, but it could be, it could be more useful with some repurposing. Uh, next, if we look at uh, East Lawn, um, same thing, East Lawn Pool. There's not a lot of shade there. Um, East Lawn Fields, and we're going to talk a little bit about more about this in a while. But East Lawn Fields is currently, uh, we do it now, but we don't, we hit it, we hit it a little bit later. So in East Lawn Fields, I'm going to have a picture later on that shows exactly what we want to do there in terms of the bathroom. So there's a shade. So for those who are not familiar with East Lawn, it's also Green Park, which is also called what else? It's got like the East Lawn. But uh, it's right behind uh, um, East Lawn. So, and you'll, you'll see where it is for those who aren't familiar. Um, but we, we think, given a small investment, if we can make some improvements there. And that Lakeside, uh, the one project we had listed there is for the Jones Room. If you're not familiar, that's why we from where we have the conscious. There's a, there's a, a very nice room there, uh, but it could use some freshening up, um, especially in terms of technology. Uh, and especially for the next two years, I'll turn to the lady in the corner. Besides this room and the Jones room, we have. For meeting space? Yeah. I don't know center, but that's very. Okay. So, so again, we're not that we got here, but we are where we are. So, you know, just freshening up that room because it, it's, it's going to be highly used for the next period of time. Okay. Uh, next, if we go um, take a look at Artisan Park. Artisan Park is not that does not currently have a uh, playground. So, we highlighted that as need. Uh, bathrooms at the amphitheater and playground. Um, and so, again, just if we look at each, each village, we thought there are things that could be done um, that we would recommend. Okay, Heritage Hall. So, um, this now gets to uh, soaking. So, so, we're going to talk about three different recommendations that we have from a community perspective. And the first one, is at uh, Heritage Hall. That is, and so to do potentially, again, it's just three recommendations, but potentially basically being the addition to this building, being the size of the current or artisan park clubhouse, right? So would it allow us to have um, about 10,000 square feet, could start five, anywhere between 10,000 square feet. Um, it, it could have a kitchen, or it could have a fitness center, which would be important. It could have additional meeting room space um, and community space. Uh, so it would be a social hub. So, you know, here, here it is, uh, it's a little blurry, but it's, it's basically adding a building in front and two buildings on the sides. No, it does not impact our uh, playground that's being rebuilt. Um, but, but that is one option, it's there. Yeah, real issue with the only this is the only issue with the only project I think we have in terms of zoning or parking spaces. Yeah, it's don't currently have access to parking here. Yeah. We would with every other project. This one um, we feel covered. Anyway, meeting rooms, Jim, hey, if do that, it's here. Um, it's a central location, so that's uh, that's, and it says 10,000 square feet, but, but it really would be scalable. Um, all right, thanks. Sir. Okay, so lawn sports. Are right, you with lawn sports? Again, this is one of those that support to, to a group of people. It's not a large, large group of people, but it's one constituent. So we would say multi phase over. The next several years, right? There's some things we can do, some easy, some a little bit more complicated, but you know, delivering, uh, you know, 
regulation size bocce courts, lawn bowling, cornhole, and, and potentially some other sports. We'll talk about how we would spread that out over at least one or two locations. Um, now, again, it's an important, we, we think, in support and humanity. Um, it, while it's for all ages, uh, it, it, it does also address perhaps those possibilities. And um, again, it's consistent, maybe except for the exception of technology, it's consistent with those. Okay, so now this is more lawn sports continued uh, going to Green Park, uh, which is uh, there uh, behind the uh, East Lawn Pool. So it's currently used, I don't know, my children play, daughter play across there. So the, the field needs a, a, a little bit of work. But what we don't have is we've got a field there that's used and we don't have whether or not it's called dancing out there. Plus, there's no bathrooms there. Um, and we would recommend, you know, another pavilion, this pavilion, I think, or five minutes of the day. Maybe it's got one or two different fields. So something a little bit bigger. This field could also be used practice uh, for other sports in addition to. So again, it's a field that's there. The store could use a little bit. Uh, of enhancements, especially in terms of uh, having a, a meeting room and uh, and in North Village, uh, two additions here. One is actually putting uh, lawn bowling, uh, and again, between lawn bowling and bocce, you put them in the same place. Both are different, are distributed, but that's obviously uh, worth discussing. Uh, Initially, this is the north end of the north field. It, 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 it was, it's putting in a pavilion um, there so that there's some shade, et cetera, for those who participate in the sport. Okay, and then Bocce, right behind here, right behind the pool to the left, um, is potentially in the past several years. Not saying the law and sports with the multi approach uh, is putting in regulation size bocce courts, cornhole, and a pavilion, and uh, just doing some updates. Okay. Um, so we thought it's very important. Now, in the past, people said they want a senior center or a team center. I was about how about just the multi generations, right? So that they can be used for the scouting America, the Girl Scouts, they can be used uh, for team group meetings, uh, they can be used for those of us who want to be thoughtful during the day. Uh, and, and it could be centrally located, as you'll see in a minute, um, at the Lakeside Park. So that would allow parents to have a downtown meeting, kids to be unified, et cetera. Location. Um, there is enough space to do it. It's a little crowded down there, but it's going to be our space constraint. Um, it would not be a large building, it'd be about 3,000 square feet. So I will allow it. It's a parking. So if we look, to, look at the lakeside complex from the slash pad, putting in a multi generational site, uh, fencing off. The basketball courts are the uh, And then you won't see it on here, Mark, but create some additional pavilions. So, what we have food truck Fridays and others, it's a place where we can sit down along the, the water there. We've got some issues. So, um, so now, so where is it? Okay, so remember, there's a splash pad. It would be in this area that's currently in here. So when you may say, well, it's very not too big to me. Well, it, it's, it's big enough um, to put in a total of 3,000 square feet. This currently has been three buildings. Could it be one building? Sure. Could it be one building? It could be connected to this building? Sure. Again, it's, we thought this would be a great location. for space. You'd be able to, we've got the, the plan to add the additional parking spaces that would be needed. And, and you know, we just thought this need, whether that's the playroom, children, activity room, classes, uh, in study, open space, et cetera. 
and it's there. It's there. Since it's not a huge building, and it's a simple, a simple building. It's simple because the size is not really complicated. Amenities that can be done probably relatively cheap. Uh, and I don't think it's Okay. Town center remediation. We go back to the 2014 master plan. 2014, 10 years ago. Section that says 2024. You'll need to do something. You're on half of them. Short white paper to stop. And if it's two pages saying you need yourself to a town hall, here's the option. Well, now we're here. Try to get along. That's about the same three options when you say you need to do something. So we are where we are. Looking backwards is probably not helpful at this point. But it is important to know that if you don't invest, invest in our community, things start to break and you know, it gets more complicated, especially when you really you know, one of the things we looked at here, which is really important, is if you look at celebration, it's currently going to be over 12,000 people. 4,500 something past. They, oh, if you look at this, the enterprise value of the residential properties here in celebration, it's over $2 billion. We all have a little piece of it. $2 billion. So there's a $2 billion investment that we pay. And as we go to sell and buy more or upgrade or downgrade, we want to really protect that $2 billion investment. So I know, especially if those of us who want to fix, no one can. So spend money. But if you don't spend money, that $2 billion investment is appreciate and maintain its value. So um, and this is one of the areas. So we need this be a sense of urgency. Take it to a timeline on the next page, a go, no go decision. It needs to be done by the end of this year. What to do? Hopefully, just remediate as opposed to be built. Build is going to be more expensive and longer, but may may have to do that based upon the study that's going to take place. So here's the the schedule. And, and the important part here is. Within the next couple of months, we're asking the community slash the code board to do. It's the clarity date where we will have towns. So let's take that date. Right now, I don't know what we all have, but there should be a, a date. So, sorry, but we will have the code house by this date. That kind of what we need. And then we'll hold people to that thing. If it's two years from now, it's two years from now. Then we'll know. We'll be modeled. We're on track two years. So we just need to put a little bit more potentially discipline in that process. So the team here, we've got a couple of experts have laid the schedule out. This is not an official schedule. This just says if you want to move in, in early 2026, we could be almost two years without town hall. We have to reach these milestones. But the key thing here. So by the end of this year, having enough data, right? It's not really having enough data to make that decision, paying the current building, and then getting the design specs and everything else to, to get things going so that by the middle of next year, shovels are in the ground. So community center, this is a very important because it's simple. We look historically back in the survey. It's also very expensive. It's a kiss. Do I want one, but how much? No, it's lots of discussion. So, what we're showing here is that in lot B, we outlined community center, it's 35,000 square feet. It doesn't have to be 35,000 square feet, it could be 15,000. That's making much more. But what we said is, if we built the largest, best, biggest one, does it fit there? 
So part of more what would it look like? It could scale down, but we wanted to ensure that we at least had a viable plan to build one that meets the needs of everybody here. And, and so you'll see that plan for 35,000 on it. Now go back and say, sort of see what it's like. Um, I guess I do. But yeah, Judge one step ahead of me. So um, if we look at this plan, it's getting hard for you all to see. But but down here it has outdoor full court basketball. It's got um, a, a multi-purpose gym, running track. It's got a performance center. It's got multi-purpose classrooms. So it's got something if you had a if you were designing new development. This day and age, right? Say, so, okay, we're starting a new town. This is something we would put in. Again, we are where we are, but we're currently not having anything. I think the community has said we need to have something. And so, our point to show is it can be done. You'll see the cross range, few charts, but depending upon the size, this is something that is not going to be paid for any out of any current. Most of the other projects could be self-funding over time, not this. So this would take some sort of uh, vehicle, uh, maybe on debt, whatever, uh, to do this. So it gets really important. It gets into more time in terms of the funds. Um, and so there'll be lots of discussion. We kind of stayed away from that other than saying price of this range, we believe this is what we'd like to work at age of 15 million. So, park them off the side, and, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you know, on uh, the rest of our, our recommendations. But as you can see, classroom spaces, catering, performance, meetings. Okay, so uh, just uh, three more charts left. Uh, so, the next two pages are preliminary estimates, planning purposes only. If we're going to do any of these projects, would have to go get some site plans and then go get estimates and then decide they want to. Right? So this is not certain navigators, not say, oh, it's going to fall. This is just because you can't say, Joe, how can we say to the team, how can we say we want a slash pack? Well, it costs $2 million. We don't want to. So what does it cost to do a slash pack? It's going to be you know, 60 by 60. Okay, So these are just for planning purposes. To show uh, order of magnitude. So if we look, um, we look at what we call our phase one, more short term priorities. So all the things that we talked about last uh, few minutes multi purpose ports, splash pad, and selected parts enhancements. So those are three projects that we think would be more short term. Most long term high priority. Um, when you look at the total cost, and this assumes you know it's the cost that starts in May 2025, a year from now, the planning problem you know, in terms of you make a decision and go, no, no decision by the middle of 2025. Talk about it, have a lot of meetings, look at estimates, site designs, and you make a decision. Put a shovel on the ground by the middle of next year. So these projects, you add them up, it's two point nine million dollars. Two point nine million dollars. These three. Uh, you know, we, you know, there's a fair amount of contingency in this looking at cost projected out. Um, so what does that mean? Well, the capital reserve fund, which has lots of usage, and if you read the plain language, it says you know, for new capital projects or enhancements. Uh, yes, we have competing stories. Yes, we have to worry about paying for big value to pay to remediate that home. But at least it says by the end of next year, that that balance could be you know, over $4 million. And so, again, people who are elected or elected officials will be able to balance the uh, order of magnitude. So we say, okay, but that's how about the ongoing cost? Because if you take that out of reserves, that's fine. But this, this group is relatively, um, you know, you've got to ensure that 
pumps are working with splash pads, et cetera. But if you look at the plus, similar to 50 to 18. And so that will come out to be about $60 ounce. That for people's consideration. Okay. We go to second to the last page and look at the projects uh, that we think be a little bit longer term. This doesn't have the community somebody because we said from a funding perspective, that's going to be dealt with um, in a collaborative way between CCDD and that, or it just gets, gets complicated. Uh, so multi-generational center, uh, which is one uh, downtown at Lakeside, uh, that costs to be about $1.2 million for 3,000 square feet. Uh, select and launch sports, uh, $60,000. And then the Heritage Hall, just to say we, we, we don't do the full Artisan Park, we do a, a half or 5,000 square feet, $2.4 million. And so you add this to a buck, and it's uh, close to, I believe, $4 million. So this would be projects that would take place, you know, not this year, next year, but as reserves are available, as funding is available, as we demonstrate. Balance first all the other projects. Last chart. That's one of the next steps. So the next steps I, I mentioned. This group has been working since November. Well, not only this what you see today, but all the background and details. We will publish that report um, by the end of August. Uh, next. Uh, we think it's important whether or not one project is selected or six projects are selected, that, that this group who has some subject matter experts can help God, this guy, the COA board in, in terms of getting to execution. So we would volunteer to help whether or not it's picking you know, splash pad or, or whatever. But we know we have some smart people here who say, hey, I can help. I'll go talk to the architects, I'll go talk. So we would do that. We um, would, um, you know, very important, the town hall remediation plan by the end of September. That was our plan that we wrote out. But the town hall publishes the plan as to when it's going to be remediated, what it's going to be done, one way or the other. And if that plan gets published by the end of September, that's a very aggressive time frame for very novelists. We don't know a lot of things. What might be uh, uh, then this is what this group of this group here would be asking of the community and asking um, for authority. One is by the November 15th. It's just to give a thumbs up, a thumbs down, not sure view of each one of these projects. So in other words, I'm just taking our report and saying thank you for to say this we're never doing not going to do that. These sound promises, not committed to them, not agreeing to them, but just a conceptual approval so that we all would know, the community would know, okay, we're not getting a community center because if the board, despite facts and the data we presented, it's not good. okay, may not like it, but there would be clarity. That was important. That this clarity that we take position so that we don't end up five years after 2019 saying, What did we do? Was there ever an intention to doing it or not? So we want to want to kind of force that discussion. And again, the new core board could come in and say, I don't think Walmart said we're not doing it, fine, but at least with the people that we've elected for them to take position. And that position could change once they get estimates. Once future issues come up, that's fine. It's not a commitment, it's just a, a direct a conceptual proof. Um, so we would like to begin, as I said, with the phase one of those projects, uh, you know, by mid uh, 2025, and the remaining projects you know, would be conditional upon available funding. There's not funding, you can't do that. Um, the other thing that we think is very important. And we've had a lot of discussions on this. Is if we are going to do any of these projects, that's important 
that the town hire a certified project manager because there's a lot of well-meaning, nice people who are serving by committees and on boards, etc. They're not certified project. That's a specific certification title. And, and we do know, I, I personally know, there are some people who, some of our corporate partners, have some people who are retiring or whatever. This, that, that skill is really important, but it, it's a help. And, but not a lot of money to get somebody who can just manage the projects. And if we can manage the projects, if we want to want to pick a splash pad, whatever, it had to take two years to do because, and, and have false money. Put a project manager, manages every day, it's one of the Like the general contractor would do. That's a skill. So if we if we did it, I believe, if COA elects to proceed, we would think that as we built into those estimates, that will cost us what we want to have that skill. Um, and then lastly, very importantly, as it relates to, to a community center, if we are going to proceed with that, that, that takes the whole community working together along with uh, different representative bodies. So it's financing vehicles, there's all sorts of things. Affordability, but that's not pro, that's not CC, it's, it's our community leaders that get together and decide how to count in it. So I think that's uh, yeah. okay. So thank you all. Uh, again, I, I was up here presenting the charts, but, but it was this group of people here. I guess I lost. So, so I'm up here, but this group of people spent a lot of time and effort um, collecting and analyzing what the community told us. So uh, the way we're going to do for the next hour, some of us can stay here all night, but we're just going to um, open, open it up. Let me just do a little different. How many people would like to see no, to give your observation, you can ask questions. We're not going to do a dialogue. We can, after we've heard everything, we can comment. So it's basically, you can ask a question, but it's not going to be back and forth dialogue because it's not fair to everybody. So it's right. We're gonna, and we're going to have it something that's going to be four minutes. It's the bottom of our city out there. We'll last four minutes. That's it, so others can have a chance. And if everybody gets folded and it's still about time, you want to take eight minutes, you can take another two. Yeah. And we have one hand raised online. So we'll get it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, somebody wants to go first. <laughs> I saw that in person. Okay. What do you want time for? Thank you for all your work. I know it's a big undertaking. One of the things I'm not sure you can actually look at doing is one of the things I brought up in pro of meetings with town hall, which in uh, my opinion, solve a lot of things I'm going to do with the Kenya Center. Is with the build up construction where you see the walls come up, you see the you know uh, factory being built, distribution centers being built, you can build them four or five stories for that. Something compared to the cost per square footage of that compared to the cost per footage of the community center. The center, along with the cost of grading the lot, putting all the drainage and everything in there, just easy building. If you use a tilt up type of structure, you put it the size you want, you can make it four stories, you can make it five stories. You have pickleball up on the top, you can have eight, ten plus courts in the sun, you can have canopies up there, you could have indoor tennis courts if you want, boxy ball courts, racquetball courts, dancing facilities, you know, conference centers, you can do a lot. Just working out all this, uh, just by using different, uh, I think, some of the types of construction, and probably my opinion, save a little bit more money than preparing lot B and get kind of built up. You thought it would be pretty awesome, but you all will probably know what happened at the CCD meeting about a month ago with a lot of people just very upset with the amount of 
which would be necessary for this big undertaking. So I don't know if you guys looked at that. Uh, I wish you would and have that as an option. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. That's good. Good point. Well, to the blue shirt, the blue shirt guys go first. This presentation will have to be made available to us. Uh, it will be made available. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think, like, I'm sorry, it's being taped. It was taped. This one. This well, one. no, I just made a slideshow. That's all I can get. When we publish. Yeah, when we publish, it will be available. The recording now, when we publish, uh, I didn't want to get the QA, so I apologize. But the, the answer, uh, I didn't want to go back to the When we publish, okay, there's going to be a place at the end to click to see our February presentation, this presentation, and the past strategic plans, because I didn't even know the past strategic plans existed. So there'll be one place where you can go and, and read and then click. So the answer to the question is yes, it will be made available at the end of next month. Recording will be available. And you mentioned the survey, community survey results. Will that be yes. public? Yes. Will that include the cross stamps? Well, you know. Uh, we'll talk afterwards about it. it, it we we have I mean, tables. Yes, okay. yes, yes. That will be made available. Sure. I'm not sure I just, I'm going to, to come back to that, but thank you for your question. Yes, sir. I'm, I really, and I'm, I'm sorry, this is good. The only thing is that recently priorities changed, the knowing statistic priorities take place over assessments. So priorities are. Could we separate the two? Is it possible to have maybe a one time assessment for each house by footage? Say, each, say uh, my house is 3,000 square feet, okay? You're going to charge me $1,500 one time. That goes strictly for down hall. And then do the other things we need. Now, on top of that, we have a wrench going into this with CCDD wanting to take a $40 billion, $40 million, it's going to be a billion, like that, $40 million bonds. We just got a 30% increase. We have a population that's growing older, fixed incomes. So we have to consider them too. But I, I totally 100% for this. The only thing I would tell you as the chairman of the dog park committee, don't let my dog down. Thirteen hundred and fifty dollars that are eligible. Yeah. Like I'll comment. We'll comment afterwards. Uh, but thank you me. very much. I I thought it. Yeah. Um, you, yeah, you've done a great job. Um, there's stuff that I'm sure we all agree with and disagree with. There's two points though. I've been involved in this stuff myself in the past, and um, two things I think that you missed. One. Um, I'm surprised that there's no in your plans. There's no proposal for public restrooms in town centre. In celebration, we um, we base our year on Fourth of July, on Thanksgiving, on all the different parades, the car show. There's no coming to us. There's no toilets for anyone to. Um, second point, I'm surprised that with your presentation, you focused back again on the pickleball courts, having focused on the one demographic that there's nothing in town for, the teenagers. And I've got my kids have grown up now, but my kids grew up being here. And unless they want to queue for the basketball court, or they're into tennis. There's no facilities and there's no thought of how we um, keep teenagers occupied in town. And there is problems with teenagers in town, um, but we're going back against the big, which I think a lot of us feel is kind of old news. Um, that's just my Thank you. Hi, Steve North, 1130 Tap Drive. Three comments. One is about the community center. There's a lot of discussion during the original open meeting about what the definition of the community center would. And I think it's really important to articulate the community center, what the items are trying to achieve. Particularly since I saw a lot of the different items you're bringing up here 
uh, address which we put out with you is components of that, whatever that is. And I think it was in the survey that we split the IT part basically delineate what the components of the community center might be. So I think that's a missing thing of what the community center is. If you're going to do it as one unit, break it up. But I least have, have the items you're trying to program to try and fulfill where they go. And that was very strongly brought up at the meeting in the town hall previously. And I don't see that being addressed. The second thing is national standards. The number of times you mentioned national standards. The reference material that you're using is not national standards. It's basically a metric of particular towns and what they would have been done. So it's not a matter of what is a standard for a particular item. It's basically a metric, which is interesting, good information, but it really shouldn't be articulated as a national standard. The third thing is multi purpose sports. I think really what you're talking about, if I understood, you're talking more about flex space rather than multi purpose sports. And multi purpose sport, in my mind, is something that you could bet for, from one o'clock to two o'clock in the afternoon, you're playing basketball, you know, three o'clock to four o'clock, you're playing. Uh, volleyball, whatever the case may be. I, I think what you're saying is you, you want to build a space and build out uh, in such a way that, you know, we could decide, you know, that in 2026, we want to convert two of these to basketball. We've got the basics there. And we do it down. Is that, so I want to get classification. Sure. So articulate is multi-purpose. I mean, there's another way to articulate that to be clear what you're, you're trying to get from. Those are my three. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he was speaking about value of the community, putting more money. But we as a European theater and downtown, the old the states of the university, yeah, yeah, also have the old town hall. We don't know what's happening in there. That broadening town hall here. I mean, there's also the idea of the site. So you, yes, you pay money in a way to recuperate those buildings. And you could use all of them as a smaller community center that can be used in a way instead of being, you know, building a pound of smart, you know, you know, one dog. It's an idea. We need a community center. Don't, we don't have that kind of place where we need to be here. But the thing is, the values of the town, when the downtown is rough, we all know that. The houses in you know, the downtown are in shape. And I don't see, <laughs> I don't see uh, why we shouldn't force us or grow or somebody else. To go and make them repair those problems living. Because after all, if I put something on my house, not good, they go come to me and say, no, you can't do that. And I would like to know the institution that actually made for for and force the repair. So how can we put more money in this project and when these things go down? I don't really understand it. why did we go to the point of the route that gap to be any number? We were all of us at the you did gently, and I don't know why they have double control controlled the the, the the building and we are under control constantly. As a people that we pay, we endure, we like the celebration to be then go right. So <laughs> I I understand those those projects, but it's superficial when the the, the core is going down. So what is why the theater? The theater we all use it. Why they let it go? They don't know that we all use it. We went downtown and go pay up to it. If I could ask uh, from now on the people who are talking to come up to here because the people uh, online cannot hear the questions being asked. Thank you. Sorry. I'm sorry I've been on the plane. Um, this will probably be rambling because I've 
got wild notes, but first of all, thank you for your work and for putting the time on that. I'm impressed. So a lot of work and it's hard to bring a group together and gel and get everything done. I understand the dynamics that go on there. So good job. Uh, the other thing is I'm part of the finance committee, as Jim knows. So I'm thinking about the dollars. So my first question is that I'd like you to give us is what was the average and the median of the result on the survey? People could pick from zero to five hundred dollars and they put a dot wherever it was. And I'd like to know what the mean is and the median, because if it's you know spread out, if it polarized, the mean could mean the, the average could mean nothing. The median would be far more important, but I think we should look at both those numbers. And I think that's gonna dictate or help to decide what our appetite is, because everybody wants a lot of stuff. And all I heard was, I'm willing to pay a little bit more. I don't know what the definition of more is. Okay. So I think that's a number I'd like to see real soon. Tied in with that town hall, because we are gonna have over 4 million next year. Um, these projects are gonna take our reserves down. Town hall is going to need something. We know that, right? It's either gonna be remediated the way it is, or it's gonna be torn down and rebuilt. I would tell you that even if it could be rebuilt, it's not adequate for what we need. We've had a problem with space there. It's not adequate to serve the community today. So putting it back the way it was, it, we're gonna have a continuing problem, right? So I don't think that's a good option. So you're gonna to have to do something with it and it's probably gonna come out in the engineering study that's gotta be taken down anyway. But I think we should consider that regardless. That's a 15,100 square foot uh, building. That's what it is today. And you're nodding, you, you know what it is. And, and you, can't, you can't build a second story on it and all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna have to come down. And if you expand into the back, I think the footprint could get a little bit more, maybe close to 2,000 square feet. The nods are there, so call it 17,000 square foot footprint. You build it two stories, you got 34,000 square feet on that same footprint, so you don't have to do a thing. I know there's been talk about the field across the street and vacating the road and all that. We can get a 34,000 square foot building there. That'll serve our needs. I think that takes care of our needs. So I think that's, but that's gonna take, much like the Civic Center, that's gonna be a project that's gonna take debt. And I think anything that happens at that place is gonna take debt. So you're probably gonna have two tranches of debt in this process. One early one to take care of the 851, and then maybe one later one for the Civic Center. That decides to go. But I would tell you the generic feeling in town is that Lot D is not a good spot for the Civic Center, right? I see heads bobbing again. So you don't have to feed you. are at Starbucks and see here too, right? We've all heard it. But people are just saying, that's not the right spot. It should be in the town center. Blah, blah, blah. And there's some ideas there that I think you should continue to keep those alive and try to massage them, make them work, vacate the road, buy the school property, all that, see if you can get it done. But there's a lot of hurdles, I understand, to get there. Um, Lakeside, Jones Room, just a refurbishment. You know, special events is on there all the time. A second story there to facilitate space for people and maybe something up above and whatever else would be pretty easy to do. And I think you could, can I keep going? <laughs> One more minute, oh, come on. Um, I would suggest maybe that multi-generational thing, the 3,000 square foot that you're gonna put out in that area, take all those nice trees out and everything and kind of decimate the look of the lake. I would put that up on top of the Jones room or put that in the Jones room and build that out a little bit more and put a second story on there, I'd consider that. Um, then the lot B. Um, I'm a pickleball fan, so I'm a pickleball guy. I'm not. So I am too. There's another one, they're good. Okay, so I, I wanted to make that disclosure up front. Um, one thing I want you to know, and Lauren knows this, but pickleball got beat up last year really bad. And we were, there was talk of going to lot B. And we were, we were labeled as we were greedy and we didn't want to go to lot B. I'm here to tell you that we made an approach to the board, the majority of the board at the time, through Lauren, and said we would compromise and go in lot B. 
we're trying to figure out a solution there. So all the talk about us not wanting to go to Lab B is not true. That's the first time I've said this in public. So my wife is nodding, she's happy. Lauren should be happy too, because we kept our mouth shut. So anyway, I think the flex courts, all of that, I think it's beautiful, it's nice. The only thing on Lot B, you're not gonna have water, you're not gonna have bathrooms. That's a challenge. Um, we gotta work on that, find some space for it. Uh, you got the tension pond in the back, and you got the swell along the side. That's gonna be dicey. So, but anyway, thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so I'll echo uh, Mr. Jackson's comment. So I'm Eric Oakley, 126 Mosaic Drive. And full disclosure, I do sit on the pro board, um, so you can throw things at me later. Um, the uh, the biggest piece is I say. Hey, if you, if you throw things at me later, that's fine. Um, the biggest piece that I'll say, I don't want the timer to go off. Um, the biggest thing that I'll say is this is probably the most personalized presentation to the community I have ever seen. Um, I was part of the prior board way back in the day when we originally did this master plan that went nowhere. Um, and part of the problem with that was is that, number one, there was no requirement for the board to actually do anything, which I think is key that you need to continue to push the board to do that. Um, and the other piece is that it was it was done by third parties, which was which was great, but this is the first time that's actually coming from people that live in the darn thing. Um, so I think that that's very important. The questions that I had in regards to maintenance, one of the pieces was in regards to staffing. So it was one area that I think should be called out somewhere um, when we're looking at these different amenity buildings, because obviously if we have additional space, it's going to account for additional programming, so we need someone to program it. Or just from a safety and security standpoint, we might need additional park and pool monitors, different people to be there. Um, something that I think that would need to be considered. Um, the other question that I had uh, is just in regards to lawn sports, understanding on if it needs to be a, and I don't play lawn sports, so I don't know, does it have to be a live grass field or can it be artificial turf and i think because there's two different expenses there and understanding what the community wants um there's two different maintenance costs there are different capital costs there um, and then there's also just what does the community want and understand um, with those pieces um i think with the the town hall building itself one of the questions that i had and i was surprised if a lot of the um, diagrams that we're seeing is we've always been bringing up parking um, parking always comes up as a, as a question um, that there's concerns on residents spillover into the side streets. And I know that that's obviously part of the design of the community, that the intention is, is that people park on the street. Um, that's one of the ideas behind there. But I think it's important that when we go through these pieces, that if there's an intention to use on-street parking in those cases to support some of these places, that that just be disclosed, um, that we know everyone going into that, that's what we're planning on doing, right? Um, is that some of those, those pieces would be there. Um, the other piece too was in regards to any uh, facilities that would be multi-story, um, where the expense has always been in the past was that, and was in regards to an elevator. Um, because obviously there's an elevator expense there, and then there's expense with maintenance of an elevator facility. So just making sure that's included in whatever this is. Um, and the last point that I had was there was a comment made on figuring out whether we go a self-funding route um, versus uh, you know doing some sort of an initial assessment. And I think it would just be curious and understanding, is it a piece where we're going to raise assessment slowly over time as a rec recommendation, or is it more of we're gonna do a special assessment to try to capture some of those funds on the onset, and then we can figure out the maintenance costs afterwards. But other than that, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, the person, uh, we have to, can you unmute them? Can you unmute everybody? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, for those uh, who are online, uh, the floor is now open. If you could just identify yourself before speaking. Uh, sure. Uh, Dick Larson, uh, can you hear me okay? We can. Great. Um, 11 Fall Mosaic Drive. Uh, first, um, uh, at this point, this really is a uh, terrific piece of work. So I appreciate 
all the many, many hours that uh, you folks have, have uh, put into it uh, to date. Uh, two comments. Uh, one is, I was wondering uh, if we couldn't accomplish much um, of what could be needed in a community center through all the other programs that you, projects that you have. For example, there's the expansion of Heritage Hall. <clears throat> there's the um, uh, development of multi-use fields. There's the uh, multi-generational -genera buildings around Lakeside. Um, there's a new town hall, which actually could be expanded as, you know, per Mike's comments. Uh, and so I'm wondering whether through all those things, whether there's enough that we don't really need to do the community center, uh, especially if it's going to cost anywhere near the um, $40 million that CCDD has uh, proposed. <clears throat> and if we didn't have to do it, then I think uh, using some of the other projects, maybe change them a bit, expanding them a bit, might accomplish much the same as the center, but uh, at lower cost. And then secondly, uh, appreciate the need for a much more thorough study on a community center, um, given the potential you know, high cost of that. And as you look to funding for that or other things, um, CCDD has proposed uh, some funding options through uh, long-term bonds. Um, CROBA has a lot of uh, funding options between the um, uh, operating uh, capital fund, the uh, reserve, uh, and the capital improvement fund, you know, assessments. Uh, but the basic difference is, and I know you all know that, uh, is that a celebration uh, through CROA and its um, abilities to raise money, um, and also they can uh, bond as well. Uh, anything we do is a celebration uh, amenity uh, versus CCDD, uh, if they fund it through long-term bonds, uh, that becomes an Osceola uh, County amenity. And not that we shouldn't do that or can't do that, but I think that issue needs to be thoroughly explored from a legal and regulation and uh, rules standpoint to make sure that um, if we do go to long-term CCDD funding, that we're fully aware of the you know, opportunity as well as the risks uh, in doing that. So that's it. Uh, once again, thanks for the great job you guys did. Um, I've done uh, chaired uh, master plan groups before. This is really a, a first rate uh, piece of work. Thanks a lot. John, John online. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is John Wiegan. I live in um, Artisan Park at 1306 Artisan Park or Artisan Avenue West. I want to reiterate, I came very late into the meeting, but from what I saw, you guys have done a great job in your presentation. So thank you very much to the volunteers that put forth all the time and energy and effort into putting this together and being, making it so informative for the community. That's the first thing. I, um, like Mike Jackson, have served, and Dick Larson actually, have served on the Finance Committee. I'm on that right now. And I just want to reiterate what um, a little bit of Eric said, as well as Mike. Um, what would be very important for me is to see some sort of additional information. Maybe it was presented, and I missed that part, of what the actual year-to-year -year estimated operational cost of these additional amenities would be. Not just, um, well, yeah, one, operationally, and two, also what it would cost us net effect for reserves, right? We have to re keep these amenities up to par, replace them over a period of time. The other thing, you might have already indicated this, but can I just really pause and ask how many people responded to the surveys? Uh, 906 people, 20%. That's great. That's, that's really good. All right, so that's very, that's very good. Th thank you for just confirming that for me. It would be also very helpful that uh, as a follow-up to those individuals who participated and who did not, that we we were asked, which I really appreciate it, what are you willing to spend? But it would be also good to inform our, our residents what it will cost now if we decide to move forward with some of these items to give people an idea of what these amenities will cost. Because sometimes when people see the numbers and the operating numbers, they they make different decisions on, on what their ranking and priority would be. That's just a suggestion. Usually nobody takes that into account, but I wish you guys would consider that or the board will. And then the final thing is I just want to reiterate what Dick Larson said a moment ago about the idea of raising bonds. As most of you know, interest rates aren't ideal. And I know the possibility of raising large amounts of capital through bonds are um, maybe something we consider in the future, but I, I would... Uh, strongly advocate against the idea of doing it in this environment, given the, the high rates and the high cost of borrowing money. 
And then the second thing is, as Dick reiterated, I really want to impress upon the fact that if this becomes a community center or a community uh, capital item for our community, that we, I am um, protective of what we have. I think that's what makes celebration so special that if we decide to fund something like that, we do get legal opinions to make sure that if we end up endeavoring into funding this, so that it's a project that's open to celebration residents, ideally only. I know that could be controversial and not necessarily politically correct, but if we're paying for something and a many that we want as a community, I think it's important that we keep it exclusively to our community and their guests. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else online? Just if we did. No, that's it. Okay, so um, I, I'll turn it. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna. Uh, I, I don't really want to go address every point. Uh, we will take it. I mentioned the one number I know, not the ask the average and the median. I don't know the median. Yeah. Okay, and the average is. No. So, what's the average? Yeah, I can't do that. Um, so the median dollar. The $159 made sense additionally. Additional as you say, really, the median dollar was about a hundred, was a hundred dollars. Um, that did vary based on whether the household had children or not, and it also varied by village. So if the household had children, they were actually willing to pay more money um, at $161. That's the mean and without children, it was $118 mean. When you look at villages, most of them, most of the villages were about hundred dollars median, uh, with the exception of Island Village, who was willing to pay significantly less, and like, and North Village, who was also significantly less, and Lake Island was significantly less. Okay. Uh, oh, also, real quick, so thirty percent of the respondents actually supported zero dollars. Uh, increased thirty three percent of the respondents supported an increase of one hundred and fifty dollars or more. And the remaining 37% is in that $1. So, based on that, I'll just give you a back of the envelope. I don't have it in front of me, but from memory and looking at it, 30 year bond, 5%, um, $100 a year per household is probably about $10 million. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, and depending upon not looking we'll into interest rates, but but our recommendation if you notice so that would be more of a longer term, but hopefully the rates are different. Um, the only other comment I'll make, just in terms of how to fund this, now we looked at capital reserves. We did, you know, the question was brought up, you know, assessment. You know, we we looked at, at and and perhaps we'll recommend. As we discuss it further, we 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 want to we didn't get into the funding mechanisms at the, you know until we decide what we want to do the next forty five days. Well, you know, but we have informally just discussed. You know, there's a bunch of different things you can do. You know, you know, you know assessment is one way. I personally you know, like the assessment. Most people won't because you know, pay a lot of money up front. Yeah, you know, there are other ways to do that. Um, as you may be aware, and if I don't get this right, simply in front of you know, the capital reserves are funded when somebody buys a house. They have to pay basically one year's worth of public fees to the fund. You could adjust that because the problem I see, the finance guy with that formula is a million dollar house and a small house, five million dollar house, are all paying the same amount, which is it's pretty small. And so there could be the ability to adjust that. Okay. None of us pay for it directly. We, we directly impact us when we sell our house. But with realtor fees changing, et cetera, you know, it, you know it, 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 could, it could be an attractive option. That would be something that the bill, the court, the, not even us, decision or pro that they would have to go out to the, as a referendum. But there are other ways to do it. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to do it. If, if somebody decided they want to spend the money. Yeah. 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 I think there's several people on the table here that have comments and we can answer yeah, yeah, some of these questions. Sure. So if you want to go one by one, you want to take it in the orders and add up to notes. Yeah, I, think we should just, I think we should just start. 
roundtable here for comments from this group that's done all the work. So, Marco, we'll just talk with you, Anthony. Well, Steve, thank you for telling me about this. And what we're going to do is actually flexible to the one time, one hour, one sport, another hour. The event is a good application. You can have a full day, volleyballs, the next day, food sub, or three days a week, eco balls. And sports to go and first, what about that? Yeah, Answers to questions. I just wanted to say that. Um, I'm really uh, thankful that all the participants that we had not only at our meeting, those that show up at our meetings regularly, um, and everyone that participated in the survey, I think the strength of what we could present back to the community is a reflection of that. So I just want to take time to thank the residents really. Um, I did want to address uh, some questions directly. Uh, super talking about how before we broke up the Times Community Center that is still based. Uh, one of our presentation we can't see on the media. Um, uh, so the idea is still a civic center, which is town hall, and that is meeting rooms uh, for things like this, for Prague, or any other group that wants to see. I think it's going to be uh, classes side later, but I think it's classes type kind of get all that stuff out into what would be an activity civic center so that things are more uh, dealing with um, uh, uh, physical activities, things that make noise, et cetera, getting this out. And that the civic building is just that. Other than that, if you want to redo it, uh, there is an RFD out there that start study. Uh, getting all it takes to build that building. Um, we'll see which direction you go with it, too. The point of it be part of something else. If it turns out that building cannot, it's not worth saving. If there's something for us. We have plus million if you need to build it. Uh, there's paid for that amount of money. Uh, I can easily do the second floor or something else. That's very easy to do. Where that is, that's obviously uh, subject for discussions. But I will say if I'm the 51 site, it's the back building there, same size. For the civic functions of what the management company needs, what gamers need, so on, and things like that, 15,000 square feet is actually pretty good. Um, but when you come down that, you want to do something else. Um, if you stand on a lot, you have to have parking. That would be the limitation of that side is being at that parking. Um, for Lakeside, for instance, we could have parking to uh, what we're showing there for the mission. One thing I'll say about that is that you just want to build it. Uh, first off, that we'll call it multi generational, but that'll be up to what the maybe it's size in mind. The first thought uh, person with that is that that would be something that could be a team center. Right now, it's a downtown business, all back and forth and could be in some problem. Uh, if that was something that's more team oriented, it's in eye shot of uh, all the restaurants and the other activities downtown. Um, of course, it would have a activity spaces here, and also be used for other things. It's great for this and that. Uh, but that's up to our program discussion. That's where. Uh, when I can see something here, we talked about having a, uh, an activity center, something that's really not a lot of or something by the school, uh, at New York Gym. Um, but showing on plan is something the same size, but please read the school has. And uh, also, it's uh, anywhere else, uh, potentially a full in space in here, but not anywhere else. We could have a black box, we could have hand studios. Excuse this, so that's a large expert, which is just one of the community sites that all these pieces of parts are. But the idea is that that is uh, more of an outflow of one of our activities. Uh, the third one, the social aspect, is obviously like that, and possibly here, expand with this. Um, you can know, all know that the pricing part is wonderful. So, can you do something like that right here? The answer is yes. Uh, this one piece that probably should be here is at the center. Um, I don't know if there is none, but we're anywhere else. So, thanks to the facilities here. How nice would it be if there was some limited food service or something that would be this building in this area? Uh, something for all the rest of us in the other villages and approaches. Like we have some of our to help fund that. Um, so, but also, providing more meeting rooms to other places. 
for instance, on the East Village, we don't have any. Uh, we have a little unit around. Part of that was to have a neighbor there. Also, I have a neighbor with the piece that's over by Larson. And restaurants uh, sort of come over us. But the Larson thing is the if you're sad and bomb, and that I saw it for the trees, if there's something in top that that happens, and then neighbor with it, that of course would be a spot to. Uh, get ready for uh, the events that are going to So I have a place to meet there, get ready, stuff like that sort of things. So it's acceptable. So the other thing I have a bathroom center, I have to speak a quick round across from it, you know, I have a bathroom for my own slide show. Uh, PC in North Village, on sports center, I could do an artificial surface after that. And yeah, it's a shaped structure in the two bathrooms. Uh, there is not an area. The bathrooms are close to those two. So if you're going to build something there, this is going to be a shaped structure with some different tables. Uh, in the bathrooms, you have bathrooms for lots of buses to go. It's going to be on that. Uh, and then thought if you've been uh, those, which probably have a bit, so it's nice to have a peace party. There's absolutely no one that can really sit and eat. We thought let's put uh, two monies and different tables to that square and sorry the chain uh, to figure out make better use of that and that water bottle along some power there. This is what we can set here as well. Um there is that little watch board that's in the arson. If I the comments that uh, it's not a regulation of work, it's not a uh, regulation of something safety long enough to be stupid. Can't hear you. I don't know what Sorry. you're saying. Something about Ferguson and uh, what I was trying to say in service on the board there. Yes. Um, it's not a uh, regulation size. Uh, it's about uh, over half the size of what one should be. Uh, so the thought was to put something like that here instead. It is a regulation size for people that want to uh, like that. So it's maybe moving that using that area as a possible part of the space. It's, uh, so switching out the use and building something more like that. Uh, so anyway, in the end book, we'll break down that idea of civic versus social versus uh, activity center. Uh, fully agree that there is lots of discussion going on with that. Uh, larger facilities and where it is, but the really is spots uh, of the land in this thing. Um, all seems to be taken for the only one that so I'm saying, like, put that apart from my, this, this has working potentially around it, so I guess question for the us and the county of Dale set certain having to have pretty hard spaces that they don't allow using the spaces that are going to be destroying your business instead of trying to tear it. So the other piece we're showing was expanding the edge was a little bit, maybe opening it up. It's not a really safe environment. I was still here. Snowbiz building here. Um, it's not strong enough. So, anyway, I want to cover that somewhere. I didn't think we'll be able to do that. I think it would be helpful the final document if we could articulate based on the survey of what are the components will people perceive as part of the community center, the square footage that you want to allocate each one of the components, then how you allocate those components to the different facilities that you want to build. Whether it be here in the community center or whatever, it's right now it's very it's very muddled. Very, I can see I you know all these different facilities want to build. And it's almost like we'll build these large facilities and they cost. So uh, so yeah, well, maybe a choice of do this one, not this. Because right, but if you see the allocation, if you driven from the survey, the square footage allocation, then allocation to individual components that you want to build would be very helpful to see how it's all driven. From the survey. Yeah, yeah remember the survey was from one of the eight samples. I just want to make sure that we look at all of the data sets survey put one. So it certainly informs some numbers and metrics of the standards, some other points that we have. So maybe you can look at that. Yeah, I yeah, the metrics, the like it's once again they're not standards for, for sure. I, I used to look at, I looked at the document. Um, the uh, segment thing with multi purpose. Yeah, I, I like, I like, 
I'd like to go down to chat with you. Well, I wanted to address your name. That's if and you have addresses. I don't think you have a great job of the same. Yeah, over 35 pages of analysis, but just the survey. So, again, one of eight components. So, we do have it ranked out as to what people by village, household for children, household for that children. Um, overall, what specific amenities were of the most desirable? At least you have that ranked me to have. We can't put all of that onto a single slide and it will be included in the final report, but we do have that in that all did inform the decision. So just want to call out that it is there. Um, and like I said, we can't, we can't, we got 36 pages of just analysis on a survey, which are one of eight components. So it's going to be hard to go through all of those types of things in a single hour meeting. So if you wanted to know that it's there, we have it, we broke it all out. Um, it will be your answers. <laughs> um, I don't know that we'll have another forum like this with this group, but I just want to say thank you to everybody that's been a part of it. Um, and for those that you know have have participated with us, you know, in, in the February meeting and now, um, and certainly for the survey, but it's a pretty big complement of knowledge across the table here. So um, it's been really uh, um, nice to have met you and worked with you, you know, putting this together. Um, just a, a couple points, and I think Joe mentioned it. If you didn't, we had forty percent growth in our community, but not one new amenity, you know, in in a number of years. And so, as you think about new communities that are popping up across Central Florida, um, a lot of them have things that we don't have, and they're relatively straightforward. The splash pad being one where it's something that um, communities look for, right? They look for charging stations. They look for wa water refill stations. So some of these things are are not that difficult to do. Um, as Joe mentioned, and from 2019, we've done nothing. We've talked a lot. We've talked a lot at each other. We've talked a lot past each other. We've talked a lot with each other in back rooms. We've talked a lot in small groups and big groups. We've done all this, and we all live in the same town. We all have the same, you know, zip code. So I think it is important. We spent a lot of time looking at all this stuff, 36 pages of data informed a lot of this stuff. The other seven inputs informed a lot of this stuff. And so um, we are a group that was tasked with what's possible. And I think we've demonstrated all the areas and the assets that we have available to us. Um, some of the questions on the financials are great questions in terms of what is the ongoing maintenance? What are the operational costs? Um, we're going to put that back to CROA to think about and understand how to do this. And we're going to hold them accountable to our next steps and the things that we've asked for. Um, this is not, we shouldn't do this again in five years. Um, Osceola County has a 10 year master plan for Parks and Rec. Orange County has a 10 year plan for Parks and Rec. They're implementing them. It takes commitment. Right. So there's, yes, there's a commitment that us as residents, we can talk past, at, through each other, or we can commit that, you know what, some of these are good ideas. And they, we have the funding now to take care of them because some of the things that are more expensive are going to take longer for us to develop what this what the plan and program is. So I, I think it's it's just really important for us not to put this on the wayside, right? We we've all of the information that we looked at will be available. It's not just what we went through on a, a slide presentation. Um, so I I um, applaud this group and would encourage you know you as residents, us as residents, as we all live here, and certainly the Crow Board and members and CCDD members that are here. Um, okay, let's take some action. It doesn't have to be millions and millions and millions of dollars. It can be small bites at a time, but it's progress, not perfection. Otherwise, we'll be stuck in 1994, and communities down the road, their property values will go up, and ours will stay the same. I just want to correct them. Um, a few few individuals know that there's a new amenity. I would go. Um, some some people use pool, um, fitness center. Yeah, so uh, they're beautiful fitness. And there's going to be a, there's going to be a couple more uh, toward the end of next year in phase two, which will be adding another 380 homes and townhomes. Um, the capital fund right now is at 3.8 million dollars. It'll probably be reduced because of some of the projects that are going on right now by the end of the year to three, 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 four. Uh, in my view, from the finance side, the only way we accomplish a lot of this stuff is to change the structure of the capital uh, fee on the sale of homes, because that will bring more money into it 
and uh, there's not really another way for us to get more capital funds. That's it. Um, I just want to uh, thank you all for coming today and listening to our preliminary findings. Uh, and thank you for engaging, right? For what we're trying to do is build community. And I think building community comes with everyone's engagement. So thank you. Uh, lastly, you know, I have a great presentation. Uh, there's a man behind the screen. <laughs> Helped us do the actual presentation. So, all the fancy graphics and a lot of that stuff, try to create that. It's was our content. And sorry, I don't live at the computer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other additional thoughts, comments? Again, uh, Joyce, thank you also very much for taking time out of your uh, thing. Well, I'll stay here. Just one last comment. Yeah. So, how do we support you pushing your pro life? Like, what do you make sure we all know yeah. that yes. you're going to be in front of them so we can be there? Thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, you'll know. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and one thing we're publishing yeah. of course, to be pretty pro works black and white, what we expect to buy. And then, you know, we can make sure we reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Turn the meeting. Oh, there, Alex. <laughs> <laughs>